Welcome to the SEI podcast series, a production of Carnegie Mellon University's Software Engineering Institute. The SEI is a federally funded research and development center operated by Carnegie Mellon University and funded by the U.S. Department of Defense. Today's podcast is available on the SEI website at www.sei.cmu.edu. My name is Suzanne Miller, and today I'm very pleased to introduce to you to Timur Snoke who it's my first time meeting him. And so the first thing I'd like to do is ask you about why are you here at the SEI? You haven't been here that long. And so what'd you do and why'd you come here? Well, I, I am one of the, the newer additions to the SEI. I've only been here for seven years. I know, that's, that's new here. It is, absolutely. I was originally, I went into the world of work as a high school teacher and found ah. that I, I couldn't stop tinkering with computers. And one thing led to another. And, I eventually ended up as a consultant, and then I ended up here. Okay. And what brought you to the SEI as opposed to all the other things you could be doing? So I went back to school, and one of, my, uh, one of the people that I was in school with was a, a visiting scientist at the SEI, and he told me about a job in his department. Okay. And uh, I applied for it, but I didn't get it. And eventually I found another position over with a uh, network situational awareness team. Okay. So let's turn our attention to network time protocol. What is it? Why is it important? And what are, we're going to talk about best practices for that. Sure. So NTP, or the network time protocol, is the, um, is the way in which uh, devices identify what time it is. So when one device communicates with another device, it establishes when the communication started. And, and the expectation on the other side is that they're going to be able to identify that they received the communication in a timely fashion. Okay. Uh, so this becomes a problem when the, the time doesn't quite line up. So if you send something and you're expecting a response that, that comes back within a certain time period, but the response is 15 minutes off, it, it can cause problems in, in general network communications. Um, it also becomes a problem when you're trying to troubleshoot what's happening on your network. So if you have a computer that says that it's 4 o'clock, and a router that says that it's 2 o'clock, and you have an event that crosses by both of them, how are you going to correlate the events? So and and th I can imagine there are things like delays that become suspicious. Absolutely. Could it have gone somewhere else before it got to us? And if, right. if there's an expectation that it'll be within this town time boundary, or if there could be a problem with one of the parties um, having some kind of a power issue or you know sure. other kinds of things. So I can see that this is an important way of establishing everything's okay on both sides. Right, and, and they, one of the concerns that people have a lot is, is the, the threat of a man-in-the-middle attack and to make sure that, that communications hasn't been, haven't been co-opted in route. And so making sure that things show up when you think they're supposed to is really kind of important. And uh, NTP is one of the ways that we're able to assure that the stuff was sent and received at the time it was expected to be. Okay. So what are the kinds of, this is a protocol, so we embed it into different kinds of devices and into different kinds of software for troubleshooting and things like that. Sure. So what are some of the things that people would want to make sure they're doing if they're trying to make best use of NTP in the way that it's intended? Right. So essentially, the NTP has been around for a long time. It's one of the foundational services, and it's the, they first started working on it like 1980 or something like that. And uh, it's something that's publicly available on the internet where you can query a public NTP server to figure out what time it is. Mm -hmm. um, and people do this, and people have, have set up services where they're dependent upon those time services to, uh, to coordinate activities or events or things like that. Um, the kind of the best practices that we're working towards is saying that if you're going to be doing stuff that requires time, which is essentially anything on the internet, um, you be a kind of a conscientious user of the services and don't expose yourself to any of the risks that are incumbent with public services on the internet. Okay. Um, so if, for example, you wanted to, uh, to set up an NTP service and, and contribute to the masses where uh, NTP originally was set up in a time where people trusted each other. And so they would expose their NTP services. So if somebody wanted to figure out if their time was good, they would make a request of somebody else's NTP server right. and say, you know, do we have consensus on what time it is? And over time, people have found ways to abuse that. And so, you know, we talk about how in, uh, I, I think it was in 2015, there was this, this huge uptick of abuse of, of uh, 
NTP servers where people were able to take a vulnerable NTP server, of which I think there were like 7 million vulnerable NTP servers, mm -hmm. and send a, a single um, bad packet and generate a, just a, a huge response. And you can send a lot of these bad packets and um, be able to generate a, a DDoS attack sure. against other machines. Denial of serve, distributed denial of service attack. Right. And uh, keeping in mind that at, at the time there were like 7 million that were, were vulnerable to this, and only 5,000 could generate somewhere between 30 and 400 gigs of, uh, of data. <laughs> and so um, they made some patches, they, they distributed them out to the community in 2016. They were able to knock that number from 7 million down to like 80,000. Um, but there's still vulnerable it's things still. out there. Um, but knowing, knowing that it's, a, it's out there, knowing that it's available, uh, people use it. Um, if you're in an enterprise of any substance, uh, you probably need to have an NTP service that you set up inside. So you're not right, dependent upon... Right, for internal use. Right, and you're not dependent upon external sources. Okay. And so we talk a little bit in the, in the blog post about um, standing up an NTP hierarchy that is available and, and provides a robust solution. So everywhere you are in your network, you, you're pretty confident that you know what time it is. Um, we talk about setting up multiple um, time servers because as, uh, as Seagull's, uh, Seagull or, or Seagull's uh, law states, a person with one clock knows what time it is, but a person with two can never really be sure. <laughs> so the whole basis sure, yeah, of okay. NTP is generating consens consensus among multiple clocks. And so you get some really, really accurate clocks that could be atomic clocks or, or radio clocks or GPS clocks. And then you have others that hang off of them right. that distribute. That depend on. Right, and can redistribute with reasonable certainty I that see. they've got an accurate time. Okay. So that's, that's kind of the upshot of what we're looking towards. So part of this is also understanding the risks Absolutely. that are inherent in these kinds of service. So that's the other piece of the best practices is, is, is understanding what the risk catalog essentially is right. for that. And, and what are some of the risks that people may not be as aware of that uh, come along with these kinds of services? Well, We've talked about man in the middle. Sure. You know, so, so timing is really important for a lot of different things. So there's a lot of uh, stuff like high speed uh, financial transactions that are really mm. dependent upon timing. There are other um, activities like uh, uh, sharing credentials, like doing sure. uh, signed certificates that, that are, are valid for very, very sh short windows. Um, you know, a lot of the, the banking uh, applications that we're using now are using like one time passwords that are only valid for a very distinct right, period of time. Right. And if you can mess with what the computer thinks the mm -hmm. time is, then you might be able to, to set up a window of opportunity. That so can, you can extend the time to be long enough that you can actually figure out what the password is, is one of the, the scenarios that absolutely. my evil mind can create. Yeah, and, and there's lots of opportunities for abuse. Gotcha. The, the system itself is still you know, very trustworthy, and they try to put cryptographic capabilities in there, but when you do that, you, uh, you add. <laughs> you affect the time. You affect the Sorry. time. Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't go. You do. Well, you, <laughs> It, it becomes more computationally expensive. Right, right. So the the time the response to a, a query now has to de uh, has to deal with that. Has to deal yeah. with uh, unencrypting the communications and, right. and re-encrypting, and and it just adds a, another layer of complexity. It's it's best that we we work in a world where we have control and then we have trust. Um, but if you're a, a vendor that's producing products that are going out into the world like toasters that want to have the right time, so people don't have to worry about fiddling with that. You know, set up an NTP service on there that pulls things out in the real world, but recognize that you know everybody who's setting up something is doing that as a public service. Right. And so, if you want to have your toasters for GE connecting to an NTP time source, contact NTP.org and say, "Hey, we would like to do this. Can you set up our own pool that we can have access ah. to, so we're not competing with other people's resources?" Gotcha. And that way, we can all kind of share this this uh, utopian commodity together. And it's a, a very useful commodity. Absolutely. Because I would really like my coffee maker to have the right time on it when it produces the coffee, because cold coffee in the morning just and, doesn't and do And so every good. time there's a power outage, you have to go through yes, the house I and do. touch every device. Yes. So that's a very mundane aspect of this. But we can also think of, I, I, my father has a pacemaker. So yeah. you know, I think about timing. Is, he's always sending data back to sure. a server. And if that time is, yeah. is disrupted in some way, that's, that could be devastating to him. Absolutely. So. And, and if you think about like uh, multinational companies having an event that happens 
across multiple mm, segments sure. to figure out what actually happened, to come up with a chain of events. Yeah. So if somebody were to, to, to rob a bank via you know, communications channels within the infrastructure and went from, uh, from the United States to France, from France to, to Germany, Cayman Islands or... to the Cayman Islands, being able to synchronize the time of all those different right. events requires that they have some external, like, uh, verifiable time source. Right. Uh, verifiable, because if you can't establish that chain, then you can't find Absolutely. anything. And that's the value proposition that, that NTP is providing for okay. everyone. All right. Well, thank you. This was very educational for me. This is an area I've never really worked in, but as I said, my dad has a pacemaker, so I'm going to start paying closer attention to this, make sure that the pacemaker company uses the right NTP service. Um, I'm sure when they, I ask them that question on the website, they'll respond right away. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, I do want to mention this is uh, the latest in our series on uh, best practices. We've already had best practice podcasts on distributed denial of service, which we mentioned as one of the attack forms uh, by uh, um, Rachel Karch, and also on best practices for prevention and response, um, which she d dealt with that also. Mark Langston sat down with us to discuss domain name systems or DNS best practices. We're getting through all the acronyms now. We've got NTP in the box. So I thank you very much for your joining us today and talking about this. This podcast is available at the SEI website at www.sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts. And it is available on the SEI's YouTube channel and on Carnegie Mellon University's iTunes U site. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at info at sei.cmu.edu. Thanks for joining us today, Timur, and thanks for listening and, and viewing.